Hey guys, welcome back oh, to Two shit. Girls One Bong. How you- <laughs> oh my god, wait, let's wait. Try it again. Run it back. Hey guys, welcome back to Two Girls One Bong, the podcast that's better when you're stoned, but it's okay if you're not. Yeah. Who are you? Oh, I'm Mac Dizzle. I'm Joya. I'm let's I'm Mac dive Dizzle's on partner, in. Partner Joya. Let's dive oh my on god. in. No, uh, remember we're alternating. Yes. So next week will be my turn to yes. say let's dive on in. And I won't step on it this time for you. Well, actually, more importantly than anything else that's happening in my life right now. Okay. Oh, you, if you're not watching this on the WeTube, you can't see. Oh, but, but you should be because, wow. Have, I have some really cool new slippers on my feet. They're so cute. Do they have like a, is there like a specific type of they're they're big fluffy slippers they look like a monster foot like yeah, a pink... like, mo- like fuzzy monster feet they got claws like, wh- who's the guy in monsters inc the blue one sully sully they look like if sully was pink yeah sully sully's feet if he was pink sully's girlfriend oh my god <laughs> and look at indica's oh she moved her little face <laughs> indica's face was sitting right in between mac Dizzle's fluffy feet Sweet fluffy tail. slipper feet yeah fluffy slipper feet anyway <laughs> um how are you doing anything new happening with you i'm good no not that i can th- think of i we do have i have some family in town this week so that's fun adam's family's here Ooh. super fun and we um, also have your birthday coming up. Ah, that is a thing <laughs> um what's yeah. it called so it something happened to me this week or last what week, what happened or in the process of the last time we filmed doobie enough you can't fit on the couch there's not enough room oh my god is he barking to tell his siblings to move? yes yes when he could yes. literally just with one note with one nose swipe could just flicker off bitch mary jane straight off the fucking couch but he's all he's, it takes he's a pacifist yeah clearly but uh yeah so anyway so cheech i had to take cheech to the vet right he had an ear infection oh my god um and so i took him to the vet and the vet ended up telling me <laughs> stop doobie enough mac dizzle is reprimanding her dogs right now on mute <laughs> i was reprimanding doobie and indica got right. sad <laughs> you see him he took advantage of the moment and now he got what he wanted smart boy <laughs> he hopped up on the couch I love you, Indica. You never have to leave. <laughs> so um, you had to take Cheech to the vet for an ear Cheech infection. Cheech had to go to the vet for an ear infection. And he got, uh, they, so since the COVID happened, they don't let you go in the back with them anymore. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and so they came and picked him up and he was horrified. And yeah. apparently he was like throwing himself against the cage. Like he was like hurting himself. So they had to like hold him. And then the vet called me and she was like, look, we need to sedate your dog if we're going to get anything done. And I said, oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Um, And so they worked on his ear infection. And then I also mentioned, I was like, if while you're at it, since he's sedated, can you go ahead and trim his claws? Yeah. Um, And so they took a look at his claws and one of them was cracked. So So that happened at some point that you don't know. I have no idea when it happened because he hasn't been acting like it bothers him. Like I literally yeah. have a clip of him running. I, I vlogged this whole day. So I have a clip of him. It'll be on the WeTube. Yeah. If you want to see me cry in the car, uh-huh. go to the WeTube. <laughs> um, so he, he, I have a clip of him running right into the car. No problems. Both paws. Like he doesn't look bothered by it at all. Yeah. Um, but the vet was like, we need to take it off. So I was like, okay. Indica. No. And so I was hysterical when I found that out. And then he came back to the car and get this. They didn't carry him back to the car. They made him walk? They walked him to the to my car. To be fair, maybe he would not allow them to pick him up because he's... Maybe not, not, but a- the dog was sedated. He was sitting there like this. Oh, he was high still. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. Like put a little muzzle on him and, and- carry the dog yeah. back yes definitely that's what i was gonna say like especially they do have the resources like if you were able to trim if he's sedated yes yeah if you were able to work on his ears and his paws you had a muzzle on or whatever leave that on bring him to me carry the baby 
Yeah. Okay. And then I had to go back to the vet yesterday and they did take him back and they gave me the muzzle to put on him first. And he looked like Hannibal Lecter. Just oh going back. I was like, oh my God. Terrifying. Oh my God. <laughs> Honestly, I don't ever want to see any of my dogs with the muzzle on either. They, cause they won't let the, the vets, I don't know, not the vets, the groomers, they won't let them clip, clip their nails. And they said they wouldn't, neither of the big dogs would allow them to put a muzzle on them either. So like, dude. I, I would don't, go to I the mean, vet then and just you're gonna have to get them sedated it costs, you can actually buy oh, sedation I, pills you can buy sedation pills i heard from cbs they, they gave me some actually ah. and it didn't work on uh remy got sick and um oh, no. i just I, I i walk them that's what they say if you can't get mm. them to clip them if you walk them regularly then it just that keeps naturally them files down. Yeah. exactly just files them so that's where what i've resorted to yeah. But poor Chi Chi boy. And they didn't even. I'm sorry, I'm not laughing. It's not funny. But that is like, what the fuck? Why would you not carry the child? Like, it's not like it's a freaking. It's a something. It's an injury that is hitting the freaking ground. Like, he's, he's walking on. He just tore one of his nails off, and you're making him walk on his foot. So they had to remove it. Yeah. They, I think they usually grow back. Oh, I've heard okay. that, um, but yeah, right now he doesn't have a, a claw. He looks like he's missing a finger. Adam's family dog actually uh, f- was freaking out in a kennel and ripped. Like it was, it, he didn't rip it out completely, but he very badly uh, damaged it, and they had to um, take yeah, it out, pull it out. Yep. Mm-hmm. But he was, I mean, he was an adult i don't know it wasn't very long ago it was only like a couple years ago so yeah i don't know i hope he grows a nail back but if he doesn't grow a nail back that's okay he'll be fine he hasn't he's running around like nothing's wrong either way like i don't think it's affecting him like that so it's fine dogs are so resilient i know it's like incredible i know like the bounce but it's also to to their detriment i was just talking about do you want to do you want to do that can you hear it yes okay give me a second okay (laughs) Indica, you're not doing anything wrong per se, but it's not working for me. You're making an awful lot of noise, so I'm gonna take this. Thank you. And I'm just gonna hold on to it until we're done here. All right. <laughs> uh, you're not doing anything wrong per se. <laughs> you're not doing. You're just. You're really not. A treat, but yeah, it's very but, loud. I was just talking to Adam's cousin the other day about how dogs will like continuously do things that are bad for them, even though, you know, they don't realize. And I was talking about how, how bougie would likes to swim. Our friends, Alicia's dog has a, she, they have like a four or five pound Yorkie who loves to swim and will kill herself in the pool. Yes. Anyone lets her stay in the water until she like perishes. Literally. Like she just like just cannot control herself. She's like, (gasps) yeah, like she also jumps out of moving cars. Doobie (gasps) does the same. Oh my God. I was literally just thinking about that this morning about when he jumped out of the car and we didn't even know what really happened. Like we just heard like a and, that was <laughs> and then, uh, then we saw him running towards another woman and her dog and i was like oh, oh my Luckily, god I wasn't... you were like oh my god he jumped out like what <laughs> freaking doobie i stopped the car in the middle of the street and just took oh, yeah. off that was so funny oh, good thing god. he's such a sweet boy he's he just wanted to say boy. hi to that dog yeah but the, the issue is is like if the other dog's not a sweet boy oh yeah Absolutely. He should get his sweet boy ass kicked. Oh yeah, for <laughs> sure. He has no defense drive. <laughs> yeah, dude. I, I, we just had a, I, a, like a medium sized dog that was off leash came up to all of my dogs, and it wasn't like a. It, the dog started growling, so it came up to us, and then the dog was like, "Oh, you said like, okay, you know." Don't want to do that, girl. Like I was just, I was what I I held my two big dogs in my right hand, and I held them close, and then I let Frankie with a long leash up to greet the dog and no. do whatever I that's don't what greet i dogs. i don't greet dogs oh no i mean the lady was running over to come get her dogs I, uh, we don't, oh we don't, oh, off, leash. We do not, off leash my bad that's i, I we do that not part. approach yes i we do not approach dogs even even on leash i that happened on, with, on on trails and stuff we just don't yeah i was walking indica walk one time i was walking indica one time and this dog this little dog off leash came running up barking and i was i didn't know what to do i was like no stay away no 
Because mm-hmm, Indica, mm-hmm. when her hair was standing up, she was like, mm-hmm. ah. she's like, I'll kill that fucking tiny dog right now, mom. Let I'll, me know. I'll eat it for fucking dinner. <laughs> yeah, bro. You know what, too? Remy does. Like, I had, there was like an old guy that I passed by on a trail recently who, like, he, like, walked over to me with his dog, basically, like, just wasn't, you know, he was just like, oh, say hi. And so I was like, okay, yeah, whatever. And I, Remy thinks she's a spokesperson for our house. And so when Cash goes up and tries to say hi to a dog, she turns around and goes, Rrr. like, she looks says, at Cash, so. like, back up. She said, yeah. we're not done yet. Yeah. We're, we're so experimenting funny. with diplomacy right now. All right. We need a whole episode on dogs. We do. We do. Um, we're going to so, take a quick break. Yeah. <laughs> we have a current event to talk about. We're also, so the topic for the day is being a woman, whatever that means. Mm-hmm. Um, not, necess- not, not defined by your genitals, but you know, the no. experience of presenting mm-hmm. as a woman being treated as such in society. Right. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, and also Ooh. we're going to be talking about we're just a gonna... current event when we come yeah. back. Yeah. So there come back. <laughs> <laughs> BRB. And we're back. Hey. <laughs> and we're fucking back. <sighs> Um, current event that we wanted to touch on briefly before we dove into our topic, um, was the Astro World concert or, I mean, I guess festival. I don't know. Um, festival. Yeah. Tragedy. Yeah, um, tragedy would be a good word. Tragedy. As well. Yeah. Uh, first and foremost, we just want to send all prayers, condolences, positive vibes, whatever we can like, you know, meaningless things we can send, mm-hmm. um, via this podcast to anyone who was involved who may have lost somebody who knows somebody who lost somebody um i cannot even imagine it's like losing someone in an accident like you it's you, you, something you don't expect that you do not insane. expect yeah it's and both of us have experience with that of losing a loved one from an accident um so i can i know what it's like to have someone just ripped from your life for no freaking reason it would seem mm-hmm. so have you seen any of the videos of concert goers who were there yeah you mean at like recounts like yes yes i've, I've seen, seen a few. one video i've seen one video of this girl who literally climbed a ladder onto the stage oh yeah did you read her like, did you read her her write-up on instagram too no what did she say it's a really long one but it's very well very well written she's a the icu nurse and she was like i she saw shit going down she tried to save some people couldn't get anybody's attention was able to get onto that cameraman's um platform and obviously he didn't care either uh but she also is one of the uh, main sources of um evidence i guess you could say that the medical staff were not trained they did not have they, there were people on medical oh. staff who didn't know CPR. Oh my God. She's. <laughs> That's not, you're not even allowed to be a babysitter, a registered babysitter mm-hmm. without knowing CPR. Mm-hmm. I had but I also asked for that. <laughs> it's like a whole thing of like this labor shortage, I guess, is playing into everything. They're just hiring people. Like yeah. I remember I read, I read that they were super understaffed and they were labor um, shortage yeah but i read for this event specifically that there was um not labor shortage employers suck but yeah they're not paying people enough but yes for this uh event i heard that they had to hire on a bunch of like they kept hiring on more security more security like at the last minute um because they said they were anticipating obviously so there's like there's so many things that went into this it is not it's literally there's no one person or one entity that could be blamed it is like a whole mess of negligence like because people are fully blaming travis scott which i absolutely think he has some responsibility i don't think it's completely his fault he has some responsibility because i mean i so i went to a show of his for the first time in 2016 I walked out of there like, oh my fucking God, that was by far the rowdiest crowd I have ever been in. And every time I've been to one of his shows since, it's the same thing. 
He's super rowdy. Because he kind of encourages that. He's yeah, at, absolutely he encourages trouble, that. He got in trouble at something for saying Lollapalooza. fuck security. Lollapalooza. Yeah. He's, he is known for saying fuck security. That's like his whole brand. He's like, fuck security, let the kids rage. He told, Adam told me that at a show that he, he was at, somebody climbed up on a, um, like a second story fucking you know how they'll have like a balcony of some sort some kid climbed up on that and travis was like encouraging him to jump down like yeah jump off like yeah so he's like known for encouraging people that to be rowdy so like i understand wanting to put on a good show mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that is so irresponsible yes. Eight people are dead but there's also to be said like the the festival organizers hiring fuck a labor shortage that shit does not exist People are Pay paying enough. You guys are making so much money off that fucking festival. And you know what? If they had listed those jobs for a good enough price, you would not have had to hire people who don't know CPR. Yeah. There's people, this girl's like, they didn't oh have an AEP. I don't know what that is. Something with your heart. It's like, too, I think that might be the freaking. Like a defibrillator? Defibrillator. So it's that thing that shocks you back to. Yeah, so AE something and then defibrillator is the. God, yes the for sure 100 percent. you're right so they didn't have one of those they also she said that she she saw two medics pick somebody up and put them on a stretcher and drop her dropped the person that was on the stretcher dropped her on her face so there is like so much and okay this is another thing too that adam and i were talking about oh my God. because this so this set was streamed on apple music we watched it obviously I remember, you, can't, yeah. you can't tell what the fuck is going on at all like yeah. we had abs i didn't know until the next morning when i saw your text and mackenzie texted me the next morning and said i'm so glad you weren't at astro world and i told adam something happened at astro world mackenzie just texted me that she was glad i wasn't there so we had no fucking yeah. idea but that shit was streamed on apple music and we were talking about how that contract like it's not like apple music was like even if there are people dying don't stop the show but that contract was probably so fucking massive. But I here's the thing. I've also, I've seen footage of Post Malone literally stopping shows because oh yeah. he's like, no, 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 no. Yo, you need to help this girl. She's short. She's getting Countless shoved around. Times. Like he stops shows. Yes. There's literally there. People, artists do that all the time. All As the they time. should. You need to protect yes. your fans. But there, there's another thing too, show. that I, that we were talking about because I have never been to a festival and not seen someone pass out like ever. Yeah. People pass out constantly. Like it's drugs, unfortunately, but it's like, there are always people passing out, getting sick, looking not okay. And then very yeah. often, you know, they end up okay. So we were talking about how, like how he's like, Oh, somebody passed out. Somebody needs to help her right here. Which he did. He, he, that happened, but I wasn't sure if, he couldn't see the severity of the situation because I am whole, I wholeheartedly believe that if he knew that people were dying, yeah. he would have stopped yeah. the fucking show. And yeah. it's also super weird that there's like conspiracy theorists that are like, he's a Satan worshiper. This was, was a, a sacrificial vice bro. Respect those people. Stop. Who died. Yeah. Literally do not taint someone's death with some bullshit like that. Yeah. Like, are you fucking kidding me? yeah that's that is so sad such a huge mess people are going to be he's not going to be there's never going to be another astro world he's not going to perform live for years live nation is going to get fucked score more is going to get fucked there those are the people who organize because usually when that when you hear about death we went to hard summer and i remember like a couple like four or five people died was it 14 two 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 only two people died mm -hmm. and it was from drug overdoses and mm -hmm. they were like they were about to they, they up security so fucking yeah, hard. So that's why I'm like, what the fuck happened? How? Where was the breakdown? Where was the breakdown? Yes. That's why I think I, I, and because there's also people are like, oh, don't blame the crowd. Um, but there is a plenty of people to blame in that you crowd. You have some blame. Plenty of people if to blame. If you were part of the crowd. stampede, you're part of that blame. So, okay. And I don't know. Okay. So you definitely know. I'm sure you've been in a crowd before, even us having been at Hard Summer. You, there's crowds where I, I have not. It's been almost there. impossible. You just kind of have to move. You with just it. I wave. That. You just wave. So that's what was happening. We could see that from the live stream. Is just the waves. You just 
you're taking mm-hmm. a few steps back, you're taking a few steps forward, and there's literally nothing yeah. you can do. If you want to be in that area, then there's nothing that you can yeah. do. But I have never personally seen a situation where there's a literal whole stampede i mean they're not even calling it a stampede because people weren't continuously running it was like people were just pushing like they 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 i so it was I just mean, like a comp- compaction basically they literally just consistently they, kept they're calling it like a forward. crush or uh yes exactly oh my God. yeah people literally were just getting packed together they couldn't breathe like how stupid people, can you be yes there's people on the ground and there's other people who are writing about how like there was somebody who was grabbing on my ankle as I was getting up, like, please help me, please help me. And I couldn't save them and save myself. Oh my like, God. they're like, I had to, I had to leave that person. Like, they're underneath another five, six, seven people, humans. Horrible. Just horrible. But oh, I just don't chaos. understand. It's, it's crazy to That's me. It's so that scary. It's so scary. Like, so terrifying. And I don't understand how no one noticed in all or obviously didn't care because that cameraman the girl's like and the guy there's the girl people are dying people are dying people are dying she's like look right here but that's where i was telling adam like i'm sure that apple he had a walkie talkie yes he did totally so easy he could have been like yo we're getting somebody climbed up here there's something severe but you know what somebody said they said that those people were like we're streaming live we can't stop the show. We're streaming live. I don't know if it was that camera. I would have. I don't give a fuck. I would have pushed the camera off the stage. Yeah, fuck it. I would have. I would have been arrested. I don't give a fuck. Well, anymore. it's easy. It's also easy to say what we would do. In, I mean, in I guess it is easy to say, but I also also know my character, and I've been in tough situations before yeah. where I've had to ante up, and I've anteed up every fucking time. Yeah. Like I can make a scene. Right. <laughs> I mean, it, all you had to do was literally pull that fucking camera over to what what's going on. You like yeah. even pushing the camera, like all you had to do is be like Duh. pull out a cord, yeah. literally. But that poor girl pull and that the guy's guy, arm. They yeah, were doing anything. everything. They freaking it's so sad. It was just so horrible. It is so sad. I know, but they like, like shout out to them for even getting up there and, and like fucking or trying, making that like, happen. Like, Cause people are like, they're like, I was trying to get out for the whole time and I couldn't get out. Like yeah. <sighs> fucking horrible. You wanna take a bong rip? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, poor! I I actually take back what I said about anting up. Like I don't I don't know what I would have done in that situation. No, but I, like I to think, think you would have done something. You are definitely I'm also, one of those people who I is, fight. That's yes. the, that, like I don't think that girl fights. No, she's. <laughs> so, I hope not. She's a nice ICU nurse. Yeah, she, mean, and she looks like very like she looked real dainty and sweet. She looked know. yeah, um, but she was ready. So, she was ready to go for sure. Just not you know. No, but like, it's so not, hard. Like. Literally, I mean, I'm sure I'm sure there's so many people who have so many regrets of that night, you know. Yeah, that's it's true. It's I I don't want to put any pressure on anyone for anything because like that's right. such an impossible situation to be a part of. But who the fuck would have thought? I just it's uh, just horrible, unbelievable. Yeah. Um. Are you ready? Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. I was going to uh, <coughs> refrain from smoking flowers since we have family in town right now. But then I was like, you know what? The house. smell, yeah, and it also like evaporates super quick too. Not flour. Flour makes the whole house smell. I guess eventually. that's true. <laughs> but it's okay. I guess that's true. Should we take a breaky break and then get into our um our topic for the week? Yes. yes. Okay, we're t- we'll take a break. We'll be right back, guys. BRB. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. All right, we're back. Rest. Let's do the rest of the episode in whispers. Yeah, like ASMR. Yeah. We'll just be really quiet, like women are supposed to, you know. Just oh really my. Better. And we'll smile more. We'll just smile the whole time. I'm so happy. I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So being a woman, what it's oh. like to be a woman. I want to talk about childhood first. What was it like growing up being a little girl in society? Well, I know what it was like for me. I feel like, too, we are also, there's the different levels of society, right? Our first experience yeah, 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 of, yeah, yeah. True, true, of a society true. is our family, true. is our home. True. So true. I definitely, um, 
I mean, I know that I was treated differently than my little brother, not in a, um, I, I, not in the way that you would think. A lot of people say how they had m- more rules than their sibling. Was it like that for you? Was your yes, brother, did your brother absolutely. have more freedom? Yes. I had way more freedom than my little brother. I was not held to the same standard as he was. Interesting. And I didn't really realize Does that, that bother you. It didn't at the time, but now when I look back, like I said, I wanted to quit sports. My parents are like, fuck yeah, who cares? Like my brother was like, <laughs> well, yeah, you're not quitting. You're not quitting. You're going to college and you oh are going to like, it was like a, and he was like, I mean, he did have a, a good amount of freedom too. Like my parents were cool. But there but... is a different kind of pressure on, on little boys in society. Mm-hmm. Well, or I mean, family. I just, I felt like I, yeah, I wasn't held to the same like standard as he was. And it was almost like they didn't yeah. care as much where I, like, I'm like, I'm going to go to Cal State San Marcos. And they're like, yeah, fuck yeah. He's like, I'm thinking about USC. My dad's like, aim higher. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it was okay. like, I I felt like I, I wasn't as, uh, they didn't push me as hard as they pushed okay. me. Okay. I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. I you also know, one was thing baby I... as fuck. <laughs> you were a baby. Yeah. So that makes sense. What were you going to say? Um, I think one of the things I hated most about growing up was my parents had this saying. Oh, I know exactly it, like, what you're going to say. It like destroyed my, my confidence in clothing. And they said, what message are you sending with that outfit? Mm-hmm. My mom would say it. My dad would say it. What message are you sending? I'm like, and as a, as a freaking 12, 13, 14, like from the age of like, I don't know, probably like 12 or 13, they started saying that kind of stuff to me. Um, I had to think about like, what do you mean a message? Like, why am I responsible for what other people think? At the time, I didn't think that way. Now I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Were you, so but, when you were younger, you were like, you're right. What message am I sending? Well, no, I, here's the thing. I thought like, well, I guess you're right. I do want to look sexy. Yeah. I want to look fucking hot. I want people to think I'm hot, I guess. Mm-hmm. I guess that's what I want. If I'm, if I'm looking to send a message, that's the message I'm sending. No, I'm fucking <laughs> sexy. Yeah, I look I'm good. Hot. Yeah. Like, I'm not trying to send a message that I'm easy, you can fuck me, or this or that. Yeah. I just want you to know, like, I'm fucking hot. I look good, okay. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. In my own little child way, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's, it's up to, to other people to not sexualize me as a child. Anyways. Yes. But yeah, that's where I my stance was. I never really, I hated when they said that kind of stuff to me. I was like, man, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I, it just made me feel bad about myself. It didn't make me want to change my clothes it just made me feel like because you're like i chose I like, this i went i looked in my like, mirror upstairs and i thought i looked cute yeah i thought I well looked yeah that's just, it's like and i guess i like to look like a slut then yeah. <laughs> that's what it like kind of is like reaffirmed in my mind yeah you, you know, know what I feel like there's just go ahead no go ahead jane is I... a little bedroom i was just gonna say that okay. um that reminds me of when i was getting a little i was like 10. i had boobs like little boobs when i was like eight i got my first training bra when i was like seven and wow. yeah i my sister I remember gave you it saying, to me. yeah you developed really early i did develop early my sister gave me that training bra in a separate room not in the same room it was for christmas and she gave it to me in a separate room so that i wouldn't get you know teased by my embarrassed brothers. oh my god um but when i was like 10 is when they started to like actually be like a decent size like they weren't like little girl boobs anymore and um my dad had told me like you need to wear a bra. Like it was like very, it was like, he was a man of few words. He very, I, I, he never, I, he wasn't the, uh, the discipline person. Like he just, he was very reserved. And so he just told me like, basically like I was wearing like a tank top and I, he was going (laughs) to the store and I was going to go to the store with him. And he was like, like, it was really uncomfortable for him. Yeah. He was just like, you just need to wear something underneath that because people are going to start looking at you yeah and i remember being so like confused like what the yes like what do you mean i have to do something else 
like you said, to make other people feel comfortable. Yes. So. You're a child. You are a child. Yeah. A child. Which, yeah. It's so just horrible. That's so sad. But you know what? I, I have seen people say how like there were like if there were like uncles or something in the house, like their parents would be like, oh, put don't put go put pants on, like don't wear shorts or I didn't really have that kind of stuff when I was at my own house. My parents didn't, they weren't like, I no, mean, they were like, no don't creepy. come out here in a towel, but it wasn't like. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like don't wear shorts when uncle Gary's here. Like it was never what like that. What the fuck is up with uncle Gary? <laughs> what the fuck does uncle Gary be doing? I don't even have a, I don't even have an uncle. Good. Gary. I'm glad. <laughs> like, fuck uncle Gary. I don't want to know any uncle Gary, but, but that is yeah. a common thing in a lot of, um, yeah, people's homes. Like. Because you know what? I remember too, my parents pretty much let me wear whatever I want. Like there were times where my, they were like, okay, come on. But I remember <laughs> like, please, like seriously. But I, one time I remember wearing my aunt got these, my aunt was like an avid um, garage sale person Ooh, would go around the hell one time she gave find me the fine one time she gave me used makeup for christmas from a fucking garage so my mom was like what the fuck <laughs> that's um, such a good way to spread disease yeah right like my mom's like there's <laughs> pink eye in there do not touch it <laughs> but um she gave me these like they were like tube tops and they were fully sequined there was a white one a green one and a pink one they were fully sequined tube tops like maybe like this it was like a good size, especially for like a small, I was like nine, 10 years old. And I put two of them on, one as a top, one as a skirt. And no, my brother, not. not to like go out or anything, but <laughs> my brother, my brother came in my room for some reason, my older brother, and opened the door, was gonna tell me something, I don't remember what, but he goes, what the fuck are you wearing? <laughs> like absolutely terrified. <laughs> I'm like a freaking elementary schooler wearing like a sequin tube top and a sequin skirt. Oh my god! Like he was just like, "What the fuck are you wearing?" Like, oh my god! But that definitely, I remember being like, Ugh, "Like, shut up!" Like my, my parents, they wouldn't have let me wear that out. They would have been like, "Like, come on." <laughs> I was just like playing in a room with a friend or something so but it sucks how much we're just you know what we wear that's a huge part of being a woman that's a huge part huge part of being a woman is like being defined by like what you wear mm -hmm. and policed definitely like men love 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 to blame women for the treatment they receive based on their clothing because they always like if you don't if you don't want to be treated like a sex worker don't act don't dress like one why are you treating sex workers deserve respect too oh no fucking kidding like what where is the logic in that like what is wrong with you sex workers are sex workers are fucking human beings like. who are providing a service that people are using it doesn't make them lower and you know than what? anyone. That is one of the oldest occupations in the entire world. Period. There are men there... been using it for years. Mm -hmm. There's a, okay. there, that is one of the oldest, like thousands of years old. Imagine women just stop doing that. The amount of violence that there would be in society. <gasps> They're doing a public fucking service and they deserve Honestly. more respect. Honestly, like we should treat them better than the average person. Honestly, let's put them up there with freaking doctors and teachers and the the important freaking the people who are providing a real service to society. <laughs> yes. Sex workers. Honestly. Your fucking teacher sucks. I'm no, just kidding. Your teachers <laughs> my parents are, really are teachers. Important. I know my parents are teachers. <laughs> teachers are so important. I think teachers should yeah. also be held to the same standard as other freaking Yeah very important teaching the new the next generations but in any case yeah i don't understand i i well it's now that i'm an adult but it's funny how we are totally programmed to like see freaking sex workers and people who appear promiscuous which i also than. like we're i, I 
I know you and I have talked about this before getting dress coded in school because yes. you feel like you got there dress was no coded. dress code for boys boys there was no dress code for boys and there also was a very Except, very like go ahead go ahead I was gonna say like, a I think very <laughs> sorry <laughs> a very loose dress code for girls who had less developed bodies is what I was gonna say no spaghetti straps mm -hmm. because shoulders are distracting apparently I can't lie, I do got some sexy ass shoulder. <laughs> like it had to be three fingers wide. Right, three fingers. That was the rule. And, the and skirt. if you're wearing skirts or short, fingertip length. So actually, get this, my junior high actually changed it to this right here. When we were, when I was going into eighth grade, they changed it to oh, this spot. They let you have more. Here. Because I like, I mean, when I stand up, like, especially I, I do have a long torso, so I guess it wouldn't apply so much to me, but there's girls who have like, you know, it's like their, their freaking hands might go all the way almost down to their. That's what I'm saying. Some women have longer arms. Like yeah. imagine Michael Phelps, like a swimmer, just long <laughs> arms. He said like, down, down like, his ankles. <laughs> like, wait, let me, let me give you a visual demonstration right now. Okay. I don't have very long arms, but still. This might be the appropriate. These are too short. There, I don't see any. These butt are biking shorts. And okay, come back. I'm waiting for her to come back. If you're not watching on the WeTube, get on the WeTube.com. Okay, we need you to come and watch because this is where the real fun yeah. is. Because I'm but, wearing biking shorts and they're too short. Okay, God so forbid really... you have a fat ass like my friend Mac Dizzle too, where your <laughs> shorts will ride up and get shorter as the day goes on without <laughs> pulling yes. them pulling them down but we had that same pull. that same um rule at, at st lucy's in high school we all got our skirts hemmed like all of us and we would also some people would do a little band flip like a, a, this. a fold yeah exactly yeah, 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 yeah but and they i think it was like only <laughs> like some people did abuse that and made them too short and they would very quickly be like fucking fix that yeah i'm also like if your ass isn't popping out and also that's another thing too they all but required us to wear shorts underneath which everybody pretty much wanted mm -hmm. to like we, we yeah. didn't want to walk around with our fucking pussies hanging out but it was an all girls school too like why are you stressing this so hard and I just amongst count, other women exactly i can count on one hand how many male teachers there were there was very few oh, like they're very few why. because almost of them. all of them yeah right exactly that's not that's exactly why it was because of them <sighs> or that's how they justified it yeah i mean it, it just in general they're telling us like you look like a whore here comes well, the whore. well in general basically what was reinforced in my childhood is that what you wear determines how you are treated and it has taken me so long to unlearn that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, and it's not like, and it's the difference between like some people, some men are gonna be like, well, men have the same thing. Like if we're dressed like shit or people are gonna treat us, it's not like dressing like shit or like I can be wearing some, I can be wearing some Dolce Gabbana, but if I look slutty, people are gonna treat me a certain mm -hmm, way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, it is what it is. And like, I mean, it's not, that goes into like classism and like when men are like oh when i'm dressed like you know bummy or whatever that's like that's not sexism motherfucker and somebody's not more likely to rape you and think that they're justified in doing that yeah. because of how you were dressed and also let's talk about the phrase i'll leave something to the imagination so first of all that no. phrase and it's that no that phrase in itself is fucking cr okay yeah. That phrase in itself is creepy as fuck because what you're saying is even women who do cover up, you're imagining what they look like naked. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. So Weird. it's how do we Weird. win? So if I show you I I'm a slut, but either way you're imagining me. Like what's where's where's the win here for me? I can't mm -hmm. find it. I can't find it. I don't think it exists. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Ew, that's actually so true. I don't think I've ever thought about it like that. Like, even if I do cover up, you're still basically saying that you imagine me naked. Yeah, you're saying leave something to the imagination. So what? So you can fantasize about it? Bro, what the fuck? Ew. I literally have never even thought about that. 
Though I don't give a fuck about that phrase anymore. I'll go with my titties out wherever. Not wherever. Yeah, she is known to do that. I'll show the nipples. <laughs> she does not give a fuck. I don't. She's been doing that for years. <laughs> but I do, I, I hate that so many people, I mean, and including myself, like I, that's only, you know, been in my adult life, obviously. Yeah, yeah Not yeah. as a child, it wasn't, you know, whatever. But I think, I wish it, it wasn't so hard for more people to be able to, you know, let loose with that. Boobs are just boobs. They're not. Oh, bro, they just grow on your chest. Yeah, and they feed babies. They feed Let's babies. talk about that. The breastfeeding, people who breastfeed not being able to just feed their child in public. Because I, men are going to look at that and be like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, just be fucking creepy. Like, why? Like, I don't. And women who get uncomfortable, you need to check your internalized misogyny. Because that is a woman feeding her child. Or that is literally a, that is a person feeding yes, their child. That, that is a person. person feeding their child. Yes. So let it go. Let I, the person feed their fucking child. I just cannot imagine a world in which I would be like, don't feed your kid in front of me. Because yeah. that's what it is. It's not put yeah. away your tits. It's don't feed your kid in front of me. That's literally that's what, what you're asking. And, and with that, we'll take a quick little break. <laughs> I'm gonna take a break and break it. And we'll be right back. Uh, okay, and we're back. I'm sorry. I I totally cut you off. You were talking about breastfeeding. No. You said you're you're saying don't feed your child. Yeah, no, you didn't cut me off. I, I was done talking. I was just saying okay. how that yeah, we're basically by telling women, get out of here, don't do that here. You're just saying don't feed your kid here. Go feed That's your weird. kid in a disgusting bathroom or a utility closet. Where people poop and pee. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is horrible. I just I literally like that's insane to me. Insane. But <sighs> but also, so you know something I've noticed? Um, I've been watching a lot of horror movies recently, mm. and there's this weird Really? Thing that's movies. so weird. You don't normally do that. Mm, just I kidding. <laughs> I've been watching, like, older stuff. I just, I've been watching a much wider range of horror. Mm, okay. And there is this insanely weird phenomena about teenage high school girls being murdered or okay. chased or it is... I would argue probably six to seven tenths of all horror involves an underage or teenage girl as the lead. Weird. I'm not lying. Weird. Um, and it's it's to the point where it's literally like these girls, like, it is, it, it, oh, it's so fucking weird to me. Like, I, do, I don't know why. Well, I mean, I guess I do know why. Because men, men, yes. men make horror movies. Um, okay wait i'm so sorry really quick i just thought of something yesterday we were in a gift shop because adam's nephew wanted to buy something and there was a couple buying a vape they're like what air bars do you have bro the guy the guy behind the counter asked the girl how old are you which is what they always do here they never ask for your id straight off they just ask you how old you mm -hmm. are so the guy asked the girl how old you or how old are you and the girl said how old am i 24 and the guy that which is also i was like that's the first question you ask when you're underage when they ask you how yeah. old are you, you say how old am i but the guy with her was like 24 i kind of wish you were like a couple years younger and i think he was joking yeah. but i said out loud what a weird thing to say like yeah i they were like i was like that is the weirdest thing i think he was obviously i think he was joking with her but i was like what a weird fucking thing to say i wish you were younger i wish you were like a little bit younger like Ugh. fucking weird like so weird Ugh. but that's also i mean we have this crazy thing with like young young girls i have women. experience with it i have experience with it where somebody like i was um that i was involved with when i was like 19 mentioned he's like oh yeah it's like little 19 year old mac and he was like 30. like that was a fucking predator that is horrible isn't that disgusting that is disgusting isn't like and i look back now and i'm like appalled and i'm like that's not my fault Dude, you know what <laughs> that is not my fault i was also just talking to somebody about lying to boys about your age did you lie about your age when you were a teenager i lied pretty much every time because i always you went for the what? older boys no because 
I actually found like it didn't matter how old I said people were, it did not deter them. <sighs> so disgusting. Fucking A. Yeah. I never lied about my age like that. I was I would tell them I'm 16. Oh no. I still chat me up. I got I remember a guy at that worked at uh, Knott's Berry Farm. I was with a friend. Oh my god, he like cornered me and he was like <gasps> blo- like it was it, I wasn't scared at the time. I felt like special. Yeah. Ugh. Because that's how society makes you feel. Yes. Like, because uh, your value is placed you. on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, your your value is placed on if men want you. Yeah. So at the time, I like kind of felt like, oh my god, fucking people are like literally about to lose their job over me. <laughs> oh <laughs> you know? my god. Yeah. So, um, how old were you? Probably like sixteen. Oh my god. That's so yeah. Horrible. Probably like sixteen. And I had a job when I was 16. I interacted with adults on a regular basis that were very creepy to me Mm -hmm. constantly. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean, dude. I just think about like, I was probably like 15 hooking up with like 18. I mean, 18, 19 year olds. I do remember lying to a boy about my age and another guy that I, so, okay. I lied about my age to one dude ended up hanging out with a friend of his completely unrelated months later and i lied to the friend and told him that i was even older than i told the other guy like i think i told the other figured it out yes he like told him but i still had lied about my age to the other guy so i told the one dude that i was like 18 when i was like 15 probably and i think i told the other one but like like you said like i would even say like 16 17 and it was okay like i didn't have to be 18 yeah no, yeah, you'd have to be like, I'm 18, you know. Oh, ah! which terrifies me, dude. I'm like, my, <laughs> I have a niece. Cause like, that, I feel like that doesn't happen for women. Like, if there's like a 19 year old, or like, I mean, it probably does happen from time to some, time, some, just sure. less, less frequently. Yes. But like, if a 30 year old like met a 19 year old, she'd be like, ooh. Ooh. But I guess there are like, when you put it like that, there are definitely some women who are interested in love younger young men. yeah or younger uh when i was dating women. i dated a couple i like not dated but like i went on dates with a couple younger guys they're mm-hmm. fun i just can't yeah, just like, what are we what are we gonna talk about just yeah it's it's not for that we're not no not for oh. that but still <laughs> i'm like what do you even know what to do i don't know yeah, yeah that's but i mean that is one of those things that is totally like a no i was gonna say preference like a a 19 year old or a 20 year old i still think like personally i feel like 21 should be the adult i like yes as far as development yes. you should be able like if you want to go out and get a drink because my little sister was talking to someone who was like 24 and she's 19 and i said what does a 24 year old want with my little 19 year old sister exactly. and then my mom was like well well, my dad, because that's when my dad and my mom met at that age. And I was like, I so are you, don't do you want care. Rachel to go marry that guy and give him babies? Yeah, if you I'm like, don't. You. No. I was like, gross. I don't care. I don't care. No. Like, and things were different. Like decades yeah. ago, things were different. Yeah. And I think it's it's only because we <laughs> didn't, you know, know better. Like literally people thought that that was okay. And it is very much not. <sighs> It is not the trauma. So, yeah. Um, but I mean, like 19 years old or 24. <laughs> sure. It's not that far away. It is just, I think there's a big difference between 20 and 22, like being able to go out and freaking buy a drink at a bar with your own ID. And yes. Being able to freaking like you, yes. you just, there's, there's certain like things that do experiences that do like change you but i also think i think that you know i think about my 22 year old self and then my mom died when i was 23 so the difference between 22 year old me and 23 year old me was different also huge difference yeah, because of what i yeah. had experienced so yeah i do i think maybe sometimes you know people don't go through anything that makes them grow up i don't True. know so i you know I'm going in circles now. I feel like it's a, it is like situational (laughs) and it changes, but I don't want your sister anywhere near a 24 year old. I'll tell you what. Me either. I'm like, go talk to somebody who can go have a fucking drink with you. I don't care if you drink or not. Yeah. (laughs) Like, no, seriously. Like why? 
but like ugh, ugh, ugh. like one of the number one searches in porn is barely legal isn't that disgusting and then and then you know what my favorite thing about Rajul is what not my favorite one of my favorite things he's attracted to older women like he thinks women like in their 40s and 50s in movies all the time he's like that woman is really hot <laughs> And I'm like, yes, God, thank you. I have to, I have hope for myself when I'm 50. Oh my God, that is really <laughs> funny. But you know what they say too, how like when you get older, like women do have more sex appeal because they don't fucking care. Like when yeah. you're that age, I learned this in actually it was like a family, um, family and something class in college. They're, the lady was like, women in their 40s, not even in their 30s, in their 40s are when you really start having bomb fucking sex because you don't care. And you're way more communicative with your partner about everything that you like. And like, it, mm-hmm. I guess with like, I, that would be more applied to like shorter term relationships because obviously if you're in like yeah. a long-term thing then you've already had communication whatever but yeah they're yeah. like women hopefully. who are older hopefully right women who are older are they they're able to let loose like more yeah. than women who are in their 20s and 30s when we're still kind of i think when you're Trying in your to figure out who you are yes present a certain and way. still worried about yeah what how how you're perceived and yeah how 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 people see you so yeah you know what I I did see a very um, appalling chart though that shows that as women age, generally they're attracted to men older. Older, right? oh, so yeah. Women oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're generally attracted to men in their forties. Uh-huh. Men <laughs> in general, and I'm not. If this doesn't apply to you, that doesn't apply to you. Yeah. But this is a real fucking study. Yeah. Um, men in general, regardless of how old they got, twenty one to twenty five. Mm-hmm. Just stay. Twenty one yeah. to twenty five are the hottest people to them. Dude, I that right, just you're 65. Like that, what the fuck? That just reminded me of one time when my sister was like 26, 27 and I remember her telling me I was like so I was like mm, 15, 13 maybe. She told me that basically when you go out to the bars, like it was something along the lines of like guys want the 21-year-olds. Which but she was like, you know, almost like almost 30 at that point and I remember being like Cause she was so hot. She was like a goddess yeah. to me. She had like this, these big yeah. fake boobs and she was like, <laughs> always had a tan and she knew how to do her makeup. And so I viewed her as like this, like, you know, beautiful. Yeah. So just. You like em- emulated her. Yes. Like, or and just like idolized her. Yes, bit. exactly. And, and she was, I mean, she was, it actually contributed to some of my insecurities as a kid because I wasn't. Yeah. As... I remember her saying like saddlebags and yes. things like this. Yes. That, that was like recently. On, she's you. a dumb bitch. I fucking hate her. No, but when I was like <laughs> young, she was yeah. so hot and I was like kind of chubby. And so I would like look yeah. at her like, oh, I have this hot ass sister who's 14 years older mm. than me. And everywhere we go, guys were, everywhere we went, guys were hitting on her. So just like you were saying, like the attention from men, like I was like, oh my God, you are just so like. Yeah, you're amazing. Bitch. You're yes. so valuable. Exactly. But then she told me like, yeah, at the bars, like the guys want like the 20 to 21 year olds. Like they don't want me anymore. And I was like, so confused. Cause I'm like, oh my God. Do you want them? Yeah. <laughs> right? Like what's going on there? But. Oh, God. <sighs> God, fucking a! But I do love being a woman, though. I do love being a woman. Period. Let me be honest. I would never I would not pick, be a man. No, I'm. I would never pick another another. If I if I could do it over again, I would not. I'm. That's that's me. If I'm, I did it over again, I would end up here again. Mm-hmm. I would yes. still be here as a woman today. Okay. <laughs> yes. Regardless of how it started, I would be a woman yep, today. Period. So. Ooh, shit. Uh, that was a that was a that was a that was a nice one. Yeah. That was a I, there's so much more we could talk about though. That's the thing. We might have to do a being a woman part 2, honestly, cuz they <laughs> like we barely scratched the surface. We talked about clothes we we basically talked about clothes and how you're perceived. Yeah, and and, and a and teeny young, little and excerpt of movies, and that's it. So we barely talked about like developing, growing older, yeah. the pressures at work, oh. the way you're treated different. That cars, okay. Here, fun fact: cars are literally designed um, for men. 
So uh, when they do crash test dummies, the crash test dummies are designed as men. And so if you get in a car accident, the airbags are designed to protect a man over a woman. They don't have breasts. And so um, also when they started introducing female crash test dummies, guess which uh, driver's seat they put them in? And this was like in 2018. Not in the passenger. Passenger seat because women don't drive. Or I don't know. It was pretty recently that they started doing it. Like recently enough that women were fully employed driving cars. Um, that yeah, is crash test genuinely dummies. horrifying. Isn't that frustrating? <laughs> the fucking sexism runs so deep. Like that is insane. It yeah, oh so my god. It goes so deep it goes two. We definitely do need a part 2. You're very right. Oh my god. Wow. Jesus lord. Wow. Cuz I yeah, and we're just going to what we'll just do a sexism episode. Yeah. We can just talk about all the different all ways. All the ways the world is sexist. Yay. Oh, oh my god. That's a no, that's Maybe next week, maybe the week after, we'll see. Well, maybe we'll give you a break from this feminism rush. <laughs> but also, we talked about Astro World today, which was like a nice little yeah, a little bit yeah, break. Yeah. Ooh. Um. But th- thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening. If you're listening, thank we appreciate you. you guys so much. Um. If you have any ideas for topics you'd like to hear us talk about, please drop them in the comments. Heck of yes. This. You better yeah of we this will- of this video. Or of this video. It's yes. on the WeTube. On the WeTube.com, motherfuckers. Come see us. Oh, also, I'm <clears throat> vlogging right now. Do you mind if I get a little <clears throat> clip for my vlog? Oh, no, of course not. Oh, I forgot to cut the camera on earlier, but I am now vlogging with my best friend, Joy. <laughs> they can't hear me because I'm in your headphones, but... Yeah. Who can oh, shoot. decipher what I'm saying via? She said you can decipher what I'm saying via <laughs> mouth reading. Okay. Mouth reading. <laughs> um, My blog. We just finished up the podcast. It was a long one. Yes, it was. It's not just 15 minutes long. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, uh, All right. Thank you guys so much. We love you. We love you like, so much. Like, subscribe, drop, drop a comment. Yes. Make a video. Oh, yeah. On the WeTube.com. Do it. Please. Of course. All right. Love you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye.